Welcome back to Guru Talk, where this week we're going to be dealing with the last week of contest prep. What you do, how you dry out, what diuretics do you take, what foods do you eat, how do you deplete, how do you fill up. And to help me and to join me here today with this conversation, we have two contest prep gurus. Uh, one is my good friend, Dom Mutasio from New York. Welcome, Dom. Hey, Dave. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. It was actually your idea for the show, so I want to give you credit. And also joining us uh, from California is Omar Ventura, who is the contest prep guru coach for uh, Andre Ferguson and Raymond Edwards, who are very obviously successful men's physique pros. Welcome. What's up, Dave? Appreciate it. What's up, Don? <laughs> What's up, Omar? How's it going out there? So we got Omar in California. We got Dom in New York, and I'm in Florida. We got all the all the corners of the country covered, guys. We're going to talk contest prep. Um, obviously, the when we come down to the last week, things change. You know, I'm I. You've probably heard me go on rants about how the less you change, sometimes the last week. In my estimation, sometimes the better off you are. A lot of people can sometimes screw things up by doing too many things, but everyone seems to have their own protocols. So let's go out to California first, to Omar first. Omar, you've obviously successfully worked with Andre Ferguson, who won the Arnold Classic. Um, you've worked with Raymond Edwards, who was you know, second at the Olympia this past year. You've had a lot of success. What, what, give us your protocol. What, what changes for your clients that last week leading up to the show? Mm -hmm. Dave, hopefully a lot of stuff doesn't change. You want to gather as much information during that 12 to 16 week prep leading into the show. During that time, you hope you, you learn and as well as the athlete learns what foods work best for them. Now, going toward peak week, two weeks before, which, which is a good time to actually ask questions about the upcoming peak week, I send them a questionnaire. It's a good six questions, specific questions. I ask them, what food do you like to eat? Do you need much water to get a pump? Um, what have you used in the past that work? And um, just a few more questions. So once they answer that, I have way much more information than I had to actually put something together for them. Of right. course, um, they're going to give me their answers, and then I formulate a plan. Now, it's the generic plan that, with the information they gave me, I put it together. And I send it to them. I'll say, review it. Let me know your thoughts. They'll give me feedback. I'll, re I'll redo the plan, send it to them, and say, we're going to keep in touch on a daily basis during peak week so you could um, feel comfortable come game day. Yeah, and that, that, that's pretty much what I do, the same thing as well. You know, obviously, if you're working with the client already, prior to that, you kind of know what foods they like. But I do the exact same. I, I do a daily updates. I, I, I take a generic template, and then I customize it given what I want to accomplish right. with that person. Dom, we'll get into specifics in a minute, what you're doing. Give me your basic plan of attack for the last week. What, how do you set that up with your clients? Well, typically speaking, going into like the last two weeks, um, chances are I've been working with that client for a few months. Um, I never, ever like to start working with someone under eight weeks out of the show, because at that point, um, if I get an individual that comes to me, let's say if uh, they were with another coach and they're doing you know, two hours of cardio, been on very low carbohydrates and calories are really restricted, then at that point I'm pretty much stuck dealing with a shock metabolism. So pretty much as I'm working with someone, I'm working on priming their metabolism so that their body is utilizing everything that I'm putting in it as a fuel source. And then going into the, going into the last two weeks, um, if they're doing everything they're supposed to and they're in ideal show condition, um, you know, there shouldn't have to be much manipulation made. However, when their bodies sometimes might take an unexpected turn is when you have to, you know, be on top of things. But I have a pretty standard protocol for, you know, if my, the people that have been working with me for a while, you know, um, going into the last two weeks, like we'll go through a phase where, um, We'll go through a depletion phase where, you know, carbs will be pulled down to a minimal. Um, this will obviously help increase their insulin sensitivity so that once we start reintroducing stuff back in, uh, their body's going to absorb everything. Um, then as we get closer, you know, I'll, you know, manipulate their water, 
I'll usually have them do like a water almost loading phase for a little bit. Um, I'll tell them obviously too on the days that carbohydrates are lower, we'll increase sodium. Um, I always leave sodium and never take that out. Yeah. Um, and then as we get as we get closer, I have them send me daily check-ins pretty much mm-hmm. on. I want to see pretty much you know what their what their weight is in pitchers in the morning, and then I want to see what their weight in pitchers are at night. Um, and then from that, as we go along, I'll start changing things. In the last two days, usually, I'll do something like um, a fat loading day where we load intramuscular triglycerides, which, as you know, if those are loaded, the the carb load will be a lot more successful. So once we go through that phase, then I'll usually have a day that will do like a, a heavier carb load. Um, and then usually on Friday, that would be the day that I might do like a carb fat mix. And it's all based upon how they look. And another very, very important variable is how, how often they're peeing. Um, I have them actually keep these pee logs where <laughs> they'll log their pee because you got to think about it. If you could determine how much water that they're losing, you could kind of offset with how much food that you're kind of supposed to feed them. Um, and based off that, like diuretic wise, um, I'll usually have the microdose diazide. Um, All right, let, let's, let's, Don, let's hold off on the, on the diuretics. Let's, I don't want to jump the gun too much. Let, let's, I want to talk about food first, then we'll get to diuretics. Um, you know, also, well, just to mention one thing about P-logs, you know, we, we used to think about doing that back in the day, but you know, you, the problem is you can't account for what a person is sweating out of their body. And that's why those P-logs never really are that accurate. <laughs> you know, I know people used to collect their urine in, in like jugs to see how much they were peeing out. And they would only drink what they were peeing out. But like I said, you, you don't know what's evaporating. You go to Vegas and it's 100 degrees and you're just evaporating tons of, of fluid off your body. Um, I, I happen to like working with people. I like doing these like fixes the last minute. I get people 10 days out, 14 days out, 7 days out. They say, I know I haven't worked with you, but I, I'd like to do your last week contest prep. And I, that to me is exciting because I have to kind of figure out how to, how to solve problems. But let's assume that we have been working with these people for, for longer periods of time. Let's go back to you, Omar. You know, when we carb deplete, obviously, like Dom said, you get a level of insulin sensitivity that's increased. But really what you're doing is also when you carb deplete, you're causing the intramuscular levels of glycogen synthase, which is an enzyme that stores glucose as glycogen in the muscle to increase. Because when, when carb levels are low in the body, the body will increase glycogen synthase. And, I, and that's really the reason why we, we, we successfully or, or I guess more efficiently carb load when we have higher levels of those. What, what do you do, Omar, leading into that last seven days? Do you deplete carbs? Do you not deplete carbs? Give me the, like, the seven days out uh, on approach. It's, it's um, like I mentioned earlier, I sent him a questionnaire. My first question is, do you look your best the morning after a high carb day, a low carb day, a medium carb day, a high, high carb day, uh, a medium, medium carb? Day? So I have a set questionnaire. Lately, a lot of guys have been saying they look better after a low, low day. So I'll start them off at the week high, then I'll just taper it down. Then the final two days, I'll go low, low. And they're telling me how they feel, how right. they look, and I just take it from there. It's, it's um, again, a lot of it's psychological. These guys are shredded, they look good. I'm like, it doesn't even matter what this guy does, high, medium, or low. But psychologically, if he's telling me the answers that he wants to hear, I'll formulate what I believe, think will work, send it to him, and mentally they're like, shit, coach is doing what, what I want with his knowledge. And my knowledge, I think I'm going to go into this this um, this game day and I'm going to work through this peak week comfortable. So a lot of that has to do with how they feel about themselves and how they look and how they perceive themselves, how they will be on game day. So that's how I approach it right. on each and every individual basis. So you take their psychological um, uh, health oh, into, totally. into, the, into, into um, account when you're formulating their programs. And that, that's interesting. Oh, totally. Okay. Now, Don. I mean, oh. like you know. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish, Omar. Oh uh, no! Like I was saying, like I, I told you what I do for a living, and a lot of it's human behavior, and you have to make sure that the athlete's comfortable, regardless if he's physically feeling like shit. If he's mentally strong, you're, you're winning already. 
because if he's weak, if he's weak and he has a million questions, yeah, he's going to stop it. I mean, this April to client, and it's still trying to get the last thing. It ain't going to happen because I got what, 10 clients and 10 different clients all over them, and they got to be ready for game day no matter what. My Olympia guys, that's different. I'm there. I could see them. Um, but again, the Olympia level, those guys already know what to do. We're just having fun. Um, again, with my uh, wide range of athletes, I'll have the brand new. I'll have the guys some type of um, experience, and then I have the Olympia level. So... It, it, it ranges, right. and and you are you're been a probation officer for over twenty years at at a, at a juvenile home, which is good. So you do understand human nature, and you do understand how people's mindset can affect their physique and how they look. Right. I'm not. I'm a supervisor in juvenile hall, so a I'm not a probation okay. officer. So um, big difference. I mean, we're working with them day in day out. The moment they get either arrested or detained, we have to. Uh, Make sure they're comfortable because they're coming from a stressful situation, getting locked up. Just imagine the, the stress going through the body. A lot of people can't do this job. We have to make sure that, hey, you're safe now and you're not going to get beat. We're here to feed you, bathe you, make sure you're, you're safe. And a lot of the times this place is way, way more safe than the streets and way more safe than the situation at home. So I have 20 some years of experience. They send us through training, how to deal with people um, mentally. Um, so again, I, I, I seriously relate everything that I've been through here and I, and I use it with contest prep. Yeah. Do, do you restrict sodium at all in, initially in the early part of the, uh, the week? For me, I'll, I'll, again, I'll ask them, do you, from previous, do you cut your sodium? They'll say yes or no, and I'll take it from there. Now, normally I'll take a brand new guy I'll say, we'll start off with the um, high sodium, we'll cut it, cut it, cut it, and then the night before, when we cut your water, we'll just throw it back in there. And then right. in the morning, they cut their water, it don't matter if they right. have sodium or not. So you taper sodium is what you do? Yeah, actually, we'll start off low, and, and then Wednesday, depending on what show the day is, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, we'll taper it when I cut their carbs. Gotcha. Well, well, I'll pretty much eliminate sodium when I cut their carbs. When I put it back in, they could have all the sodium they want once I cut their water. Gotcha. Okay. I'm, I'm a believer. I know, Dom, you and I pretty much do the same thing. Higher sodium earlier in the week. The last day before, I cut my sodium, you know, just for one day. And then, of course, I do put it back also when I, when I cut fluid. So when the person stops drinking, I put the sodium back because there's really no risk of, of retaining fluid at that point. Dom, let's go to you. Let's talk about diuretics. Um, Everyone has a different approach. My pro, I'll tell you my approach. What's your approach to using diuretics, and what type of diuretics do you use on your, your clients? All right. So, as I said before, like every individual is totally different. Um, just from a, like a, a scientific uh, a approach, because that's usually the approach I like to take, depending on the individual, um, going into the show, if like everything's going smooth, um, I usually, what I'll start doing, the, the main diuretic I'll use is, is diazide. Um, Why? I'll actually st start, what I'll do is I like to do like a micro dose. If the show is on Saturday, I'll do a micro dose actually, maybe Thursday night. And what I'll do is um, I'll have them break it into quarters, take a 25 milligram tab and break it into quarters. And I'll have them do like a quarter on Thursday night just to kind of get an idea of how their body responds going from Thursday into Friday. And then from there, one other thing that I'm paying close attention to with a lot of individuals is how much weight they're drifting throughout the night. What do they go to bed at and what do they wake up at? Because you'll notice that sometimes you'll have people that'll drift, you know, the average maybe three, four pounds, and then you'll have some that could drift seven to 10 pounds. So I'll usually like what I'll do is on Wednesday, um, that'll be the last day that they'll be on like higher amounts of water, start slowly tapering water back, um, do that first micro dose of diazide on Thursday night. And then Friday, I'll usually do about a quarter of a diazide or a third of a diazide every four to six hours um, go, going into the show. Now, I've had extreme 
cases. I've had two this year where people just woke up and they didn't look the way that they should. They were retaining a lot of water. Um, they just, their bodies weren't responding accordingly. Um, in times like that, I have used, only this year out of all the people that have prepped, twice I've used Dimidex. Now, it is something that is a little more risky to use. Now, if I ever do use that though, I'll load them with something called quinine sulfate, which I'm sure you know what that is, Dave. That makes this that process a little more safer. So if they are really holding like a lot of water still, I'll do something like, and I'll microdose Dimidex. And then depending on how much water that they're retaining or not, it'll depend like the day of the, the day before the show, I'll still have them drink at the, at minimum three quarters of a gallon, but at a certain point, we'll shut it off, we'll shut it off and I'll have them only do like four ounces of water between meals. And the thing is with the water, I've seen some people that have totally shut off water like days out. Now, like when you're carb loading someone, you still need to have some water that's going to help them fill out. Um, sodium and water play a big, big role. It's not just, you know, just dumping in a bunch of carbohydrates. Um, sodium and water play a, a big role. And that's also why that I think it's really risky to use something like L-Dactone going straight into the show. Because as you know, that's a um, aldosterone antagonist. So that that's going to you know inhibit how your body body is filtering sodium. So you know. Well, and it, it, well, I'll dos well, we'll get to that in a second. Let, let me just make a few clarifications on what you said. First of all, you mentioned quinine. Um, you give if you use Demodex, quinine inhibits cramping. The problem is if you inhibit cramping. You, you could be masking the fact that you have an electrolyte imbalance also. So sometimes that's not the, the best thing to do. I guess at the last minute, it's not a bad thing to do. Um, Demodex is a loop diuretic that just pushes sodium and potassium out of the body. Um, obviously, you're limiting that, it seems like, to, the, to only emergency situations because you don't want to use it for an extended period of time for fear of obviously causing electrolyte imbalance. Diazide usually comes in, in just for people who don't know, comes in, in it's a dual diuretic. It's, it's hydrochlorothiazide and triamterene. Triamterene is potassium sparing, the hydrochlorothiazide will cause sodium and potassium loss. Together, they, they, they create a, a potassium sparing diuretic that you're only gonna be losing sodium. When you look at the dosing on it, it usually says 37 slash 25 or 37 slash 50. The first number, that 37, is the amount of hydrochlorothiazide. That's the important number. The triamterene really is nothing you have to even worry about. So sometimes you have doses, you have diazides that are 25s, some are 37, some are 50s. You always pay attention to the hydrochlorothiazide amount. That's really what, what dictates the strength of, of the diuretic. And I think that uh, just for people who don't understand that, that's important to mention. Now, before I give you my protocol, um, Omar, what diuretics do you use and what is the rationale behind using them? Well, I ask, um now, usually the brand new guys, I don't want them, they can use like Spell or HydroVax right. or you know, over the counter. What if you like, veterans, let's I'll talk about them. the clients that like you work with on a regular basis, like like an Andre or a Raymond, not guys that like contact you and say, hey, can you help me for last the last week? Oh, okay. Um, without specifically saying who takes what. Yeah, you don't um, have to mention so, a perfect, specific right, 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 right. person. So, I mean, of course, you got the diazides, you got the Lasix, you got the Dimidex. Uh, one of my guys took a Dimidex and he, he felt like he was going to die. So he just eliminated that. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, he, Dimidex happens that to be very that. strong because it, it pushes sodium and potassium out. So a lot of guys right, right. use that, but as an emergency, like Dominic said, kind of an emergency last minute type of diuretic. Right. So, so we went from Dimidex to Lasix and that worked out fine for him. Um, they don't take it in large amounts. How, yeah, how much? How much are you giving your guys? Yeah. Just 10, 10 milligrams, half of a, a tab. Okay. A late six. Um, again, he feels fine. I, I check in with him. If, are you cramping? No. Do you feel flat? If they're flat, they don't take any diuretics. I don't want them taking any at all. I don't care how great great they are. You're not taking it because if they don't, if they're flat and they take a diuretic, try. Good luck try getting a pump, and they're cool with that. So, um, the other ones that take Dimidex or Diazide, they're, they're fine. Um, it's what their body's used to. A lot of people take Dimidex, they cramp up and it's, it's, there's no, no coming back from it, no matter what they take. So those, 
the guys that take Dimex, they've been in the game a long time. They know their body can handle. They know what to do. We know what to do when it comes time to correcting it. So that's my take on the stuff. But the minimal, the better. Um, when they travel or whatnot, they do take half a dye I put up a flight. Um, but when they land, my thing is do a little cardio, jump in the – that's if they have a long flight. They do go on a flight. They're holding water. They land. They start to go do some cardio. Once you get settled in at your hotel, we do some cardio, you know, hop in a sauna, and then we should be good to go. And it's been working for the last – six months with the, some of my pros and a lot of my national guys. Do you ever use Aldactone? Um, used to. I mean, myself, I take, I take in pretty much all the ones I just said. Um, I give them my experience with it, the whole thing with Aldactone. And a good friend of mine, uh, really one of my best friends, he's taking all of them. He, he does, he watches all your, your videos, <laughs> he does his own research, Johnny, Johnny Sebastian. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a great guy. Anyways. Um, he breaks it down to me, hey, oh, do this with your guys, do that, this, this, and this. But he said with Aldactone, a lot of the guys have a problem getting, pump, uh, getting a pump. So ever since he told us that, or uh, I'm sorry, ever since they, they have trouble carb loading while on Aldactone, ever since he told me that, we haven't even done it, unless it's worked for them in the past. Right. But ever since then, I would say about two years ago, we just pretty much eliminated Aldactone from mm. the equation. The um, problem, yeah, the, the problem with aldactone, people don't understand, is that it inhibits aldosterone. Aldosterone, you know, is an adrenal, you know, hormone that that is responsible for sodium reabsorption. Okay, if you block that hormone, okay, you can't absorb sodium in your body. So if you do cramp during this whole process, from whatever, from water restriction, from other diuretics, and you try to eat sodium to to, to reestablish your electrolyte balance, it's hard to do it because your body can't right. absorb the sodium. And so that's why a lot of coaches have moved away from aldactone. Aldactone was kind of old school, 80s, 90s type of thing people did, but then guys were getting really flat and they couldn't recover from it. Nowadays, it seems like more guys are using the diazide because it is a balanced diuretic. And once again, if you right. do cramp from it, you know it's a sodium imbalance. It's not potassium related. And people save the Lasix or the Demodex for emergencies, like if a person's super watery and they got to get rid of a lot of water right at the end, that seems to be the diuretic to go to because they, they act fast. I, I sometimes have clients who come to me, they're like, I can't get diazide, I only have Lasix and I'll use it. And what I find is that diazide lasts a lot longer. So you could take a diazide and it, it almost like works for like eight hours. When you take a, a Lasix, it works very fast, but it stops after like right. an hour or two. Do you guys notice that? Right, Don? right, right. Dave, one thing I'll say with like um, Eldactone, like it's it's definitely not my go-to because it's really risky. Um, I've seen it where a lot of times people that'll take it, what they'll notice is um, they'll come into the show and no matter how much they eat, they just won't fill out. But then like two days later, once they're off of it, they'll they'll look their best. Now, the times that I have that I will use Eldactone when I say use it, I mean, using it at a really low dosage, like 25 milligrams a day, would be if I have a client, let's say, that needs to make weight. And take an example at the North Americans or Master Nationals. You could weigh in on, um, on, uh, on a Wednesday um, and you don't get on stage till Thursday. So sometimes if I ever do use Eldactone, I would use it starting on, let's say, uh, a week out on Saturday. And I would have them take a small, small do dose of it. And the important thing, what I've noticed with it is there's like a sweet spot, at least a, like a 48 hour sweet spot where if the show is on a Saturday, as long as you cut it out by Wednesday around noon, then they should be able, they should be able to fill out no problem. The whole thing is to not leave it in too close to the show. Well, but Don, Don, why wouldn't you just use diaz a little bit of diazide to get rid of the water? Why even, even risk it? Because when you inhibit aldosterone, you cause the body to produce more aldosterone because the body thinks there's not enough around. And then when you take the, the aldactone away, you have all this aldosterone present. Yeah, but wouldn't you say, though, that that would only be an issue if you had them doing manipulating their sodium like previously earlier in the prep? No, so, like, if they're no I don't prepping. think so, because I think when you inhibit a hormone, the body doesn't know you're inhibiting. It just thinks there's not enough of it, so it produces more, you know? Yeah, I mean, no, no. So I get what you're saying with that. Yeah. So like, the times that I've used the uh, used aldactone, mm -hmm. 
once I would cut the L-Dactone out is then when you would go and you would start microdosing oh, okay. diet. So you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're just, you're just setting them up for a massive water, like bloating after the show's over. That's all. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, they really, no one really gets like bad, uh, bad rebounds like that. None of my clients really, really do. Um, not really. I mean, I've seen people use L-Dactone too after the show to control the rebound, but yeah. usually like that's not an issue. If someone's rebounding really, really bad after the show and their ankles are swelling, whatever, then maybe have them take a quarter of a diazide yeah. and, yeah. you know, just tell them not to put them on zero carbs for a day and usually it'll go away. I find that the guys I have to, that have to make weight like two days before a show, I got to give them diuretics for that. Then they do the show and they're on diuretics. Those are the, the people, who, the longer you're on a direct, the, the worse the rebound is after the show. That, that's just my experience. And um, sometimes you can't help it. You know, the, it's a, it's a two-day show. The weigh-in's the day before that. They're on diuretics for three or four days. And now, you know, they, they come Sunday and they're eating and they're, they're, they're blowing up out of, out of control. Let's, let's talk about, uh, Omar, about carving up. How, what's like the most you've ever given someone carb-wise and what's the least you've given someone carb-wise? Uh, let's start with least. Least maybe three servings of a quarter cup of oats. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that. I've done that. Yeah, for what a bikini That's girl? Low. And I mean, no, I got guys like that. Oh, I really? Mean, we're not. I don't prep big, big, big you know, huge, huge bodybuilders. A lot of be cool with a hard boiled egg you know, the day of the show. They don't need a carb up that much. They wake up on point, have a hard boiled egg, little, little bit of salt. That should hold you over to. After prejudging, then we'll discuss what you're going to eat next. A uh, high carb day, <laughs> so you're talking over 3,000 calories the day before, and the in the morning of, oh man, he goes to town. And then my lady makes her her famous peach cobbler. You got to try it. They kill that, and who knows the amount of uh, the amount of calories in that? <laughs> I'm telling you, she's Filipino. Yeah. Like what, but the peach cobbler is like world class. What what would you give like an Andre Ferguson who's got a crazy freaking metabolism? What does he eat the, the morning of a show? Omar. Probably the normal pancakes, um, okay. whatever type of protein he wants. Not, you, okay. So yeah, just the normal pancakes and whatever protein he wants. Uh Sundays, he'll he'll just some 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 preps he'll just take in hard boiled eggs. So it depends on how he feels that morning. The weekend yeah. of the Arnold, um, I saw him at five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, bro, you can eat anything you want right now, and you're gonna kill it because he just looked that good the morning of the Arnold this this year. What what and happened like, to Andre at last year's Olympia? Uh, he made a trip to the doctor's office. I think ten days out, and he didn't train for three days, and his diet was off. Maybe eating a meal or two in during those three days. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So he just, he I mean, just we things have, went wrong. We have pictures of him. We have pictures of him uh, visiting uh, Bev's gym. He met up with Steve. He was like spot on 11 days out, and then on a 10th day or something like that, he got sick. Uh, was in the hospital, so he was hooked up to IV. So um, that's what happened there. So 11, 10, 11 days going into the Olympia, the biggest show of the year. Um, still good enough for fifth, but I think about it. They're missing three days from the gym, and your diet's off. 11 days out from the Olympia. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough, yeah. but he took fifth, so. Yeah, no, well, I, I, I predict he might be in the winner's circle this year, so that's what we're hoping for. He's a good friend of the show, obviously, and uh, Raymond Edwards and him should be battling it out with Brandon Hendrickson on that stage uh, come September. Yeah, Ray, Raymond, Raymond is doing well. He's starting his diet for the Olympia on Monday. Uh, Dre started 16 weeks out. Ray does an eight-week prep. So it's uh, going to be fun. Dom, let's let's go to Dom for a second. I want to just wrap this up because we got another interview coming up. Um, if you had to give any words of advice, Dom, to people who are out there who are doing these last week preps and are, are trying to, you know, peak their body, what would you say that the, the most sensible advice you can give to people is? <clears throat> Pretty much if, if you did what you were supposed to 12 weeks before, getting rid of all your body fat is the most important uh, factor going into the last week. Um, then you won't have to man uh, manipulate things too much. But you know, pretty much you don't have to. If you if you look good, you don't have to make that that many changes. Um, 
Also, to another thing I wanted to bring up going into the last week, which I've seen some of these like coaches, the last days before the, the show, like loading people on protein, which that to me doesn't make like too much sense. Like the last two or three days, I actually will lower people's protein, cut it usually down in, in half and still have some. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the main thing really to having someone come in like full and dry are going to be your carbs and fats and yeah. fats are yeah. another that, that another that's probably the most important um component i would say um is your fats like you can eat as much carbs as you want um usually like i said i want to load intramuscular triglycerides before you do like a heavy load and then you want a carb fat mix or very often what you'll notice is when you're just dumping carbs, especially with someone that has a fast metabolism, their bodies are just spinning through everything. Yeah, I, I agree. Omar, do you, do you do that as well? Do you increase uh, fat intake a little bit that last week? Not too much. Um, I do throw it in there the last two days, but not nothing too much. Do any of you guys give like burger and fries? Like I give a burger and fries the night before prejudging a lot of times, especially if the person's like super ripped and dry. My, I'll go ahead, Dal. I would say like 40% of the time I do, that's if everything goes right yeah, and they're actually yeah. shape. And then, like I said, that'll only help them in that case. But when you have people that, you know, didn't really do what they were supposed to, <laughs> sometimes they don't, they don't need a burger and no, fries. No, no, yeah, absolutely. What about you, Omar? Do you ever do that? Every, all my guys know and my girls know if you feel flat, have the burger. If you don't feel flat, you're not getting a burger. It's pretty simple. <laughs> all right. So you do it on a person-by-person on a -person basis. Yeah, I think a lot of this is sensible knowledge. You know, this is, you know, you got to see how the person looks. Have they done their homework? If they have, there's a lot less you need to do. When people don't do their homework and, they, and you're playing catch-up, then you start having to playing all these tricks and pulling, you know, rabbits out of hats, and that's not fun. So the, the good advice, I think Dominic gave very good advice, do your work 12, 16 weeks out, be in shape that last week so that as coaches, we just have to fine tune, move around a couple of variables and you, you come into the show without doing anything, as I like to say, crazy or kooky. I talked about, I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, we talked about um, my client Giovanni Del Biondo was working with another guy for a show. The, the guy had him drinking salt water and laying in Epsom salts and doing all kinds of kooky, crazy stuff and he looked terrible on stage. So. Don't make nutty changes the last week before a show. Everyone has their own techniques. Make sure you, you're working with someone that you're comfortable with their techniques. You under, they explain why they're having you do the things they do and you're gonna get good results. And uh, you know, Dom, I know you're a great coach. I've seen the results of your clients. Obviously, Omar, your, your clients speak for themselves. Andre Ferguson, Raymond Edwards, you had a winner this past week at the Lenda Murray in, in Men's Physique as well. I want to wish both of you guys luck with the rest of the contest season, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Nice meeting you. Yeah. I appreciate it. You too, Omar. Thanks, my man. All right, guys, that's going to take us to the end of another uh, episode of Guru Talk. I'm Dave Palumbo for Don Matasio and Omar Ventura. We'll see you next time.